let's go straight to your questions and answers. Um, we have the pleasure today, as I said earlier, of having both Dr. Ur Dr. Ursula Barry and Dr. Noreen Hayes with us live, and we're delighted that they are uh, with us and we welcome them very warmly. What I'd like you to do now, and I see that there's quite a discussion already going on on the chat line, but what I'd like to do is to ask you um, to type very short mm -hmm. questions into the box. I emphasize short because we'd like to get through as, as many as possible. Um, if your question is directed to either Ursula or Noreen, then please make that clear. And if we weren't out of time, and we only have 25 minutes for this uh, Q&A session, then please do send us your questions anyway, and we'll send you answers afterwards. We've already received questions from some members, and I thank them for that and in the surveys and so again we're grateful for that and what I'm going to do is kind of interweave some of the questions that we received in advance with some of the ones that come up on the chat line um, but I'm going to start by asking both Ursula and Noreen to give us just very quickly their views on two of the following questions. Um, there are a number of reviews and programs um, being developed by the government at the moment um, in the area of childcare. And we actually sent members a very short paper on this just in the last few days. So my question is, to what extent do you think if all these plans come to fruition, would they solve the problems that we're looking at? Or do you think that more might be needed? And could you also say something about the adequacy of the government's planned um, increases in spending? In other words, if they do what they say, will that be enough or will we still have a journey to travel? So Ursula, could I ask you maybe first just for a quick reaction to those two questions followed by Noreen, and then I'll, I'll come, I call in a number of uh, members to uh, put their questions. So could we have Ursula first, please? Hi, um, can, you, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, um, thanks, Catherine. Um, just before I answer the specific question you um, pose in relation to the care economy and childcare in particular, I would just like to state, given the distressing and emotional week that we've all lived through, that a recent history on the treatment of girls and women um, pregnant outside marriage in this country, um, it's, it's kind of disgraceful history, but it's the antithesis or the very opposite to the concept of putting care at the centre of our economy. Um, so I just wanted to state that in the context of the week that's been in it. Mm -hmm. But you were asking the question about um, changes that the government in, is envisaging on childcare. And uh, it, it's very much to be welcomed. So the government has promised to double expenditure on child, early childcare between now and 2008. And that would bring us very close to the European average of expenditure on, um, as a percentage of GDP on childcare. It would bring us, because the government is now saying we are 0.37 of GDP, and that increase from the 0.2% that was referred to earlier on, that increase is uh, accounted for largely because of the subsidies, um, the COVID emergency subsidies that are paid to the sector over the last year. So if we add a, a, another 0.2% onto that, that would account for the extra 600 billion the government are, are planning to spend. And that would bring us close to the European average. For those who are saying, um, why go to 1% when uh, other countries haven't got there? Most countries are aiming for 1%, and that's something that we should aim for in the long term also. Um, the, very shortly, the things that I think are important to add to what the government is planning is we need to have a situation where in the first year of a child's life, um, parental leave is covers the first year of a child's life so that they would, can be uh, cared for by their parents. We need to fill the gap between that first year and then year three, when you get access to the um, early childhood system. And we need to cover that gap between year one and year three. We need to en enhance the um, uh, early childcare system, which is only available for three hours a day, five days a week, 38 weeks of the year. We need to have that as a comprehensive system that um, ensures quality childcare, but also supports part-time and full-time work for parents. We need to develop the career structure for childcare workers, and I would parallel that with the primary school uh, career structure. And then we need to develop more after-school care services. Those are the key things, I would think. Great. Thanks very much, Ursula. Noreen, can I bring you in with the same questions, please? 
can indeed, Catherine, and thank you very much for inviting me today. Um, I largely concur um, with the observations that Ursula has made, and therefore I don't want to take up time just agreeing with them and repeating them. I would, however, um, just like to make one or two observations in relation to the public spending. Um, it is to be uh, welcomed that we're moving in the direction of increasing the investment, but it's how and where we spend that investment that's really important. Um, and so public investment is one thing, but I think we need to look as well at the extent to which there's public management, because I think Ursula pointed out that the investment that did go in, in the, as the COVID measure didn't always lead to a maintenance of fees, but actually seems to have led to an increase in fees. And this is the complexity of the market model of private provision. So I think um, that's, a, that's a, a particular view of childcare as a service to parents. Um, and where provision is public and uh, publicly funded, um, it can be a blend of private and public pro um, provision, but when it's publicly funded to a significant extent, um, childcare is seen as a service to children, um, as well as offering a service to parents and society. And in that, in that kind of way of thinking about children and childcare, you address um, the opportunities for women to enter the labour market because they have secure childcare, which is well supported. You provide uh, staff uh, with a, 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 an income which makes it viable for them and the quality of their provision then in a stable work environment improves and that enhances um, children's development. Uh, so there's a sort of an, an overall benefit. And one of the worrying features of the investment direction at the moment in Ireland is that we have seen the increased investment privileging the education end of childcare. That's the free preschool year which was conceived as a, a school readiness measure and it doesn't offer uh, secure employment because as Ursula pointed out it's uh, three hours a day, five days a week, 38 weeks of the year and that's the employment context for those providing the free preschool year as well. And in the way in which the new funding model is being um, presented, you have a national childcare subsidy, which is about childcare, and you have the free preschool year, which is about education. And this split between care and education in early childhood education, childcare services, is, is is, is um, a feature of poor quality underfunded services internationally. So I would like to see funding being thought about in uh, the general provision of services and pooled so that we're looking at a career structure for people working with children from zero to three. And you can then have public funding, public managed, private services. We've got to work from where we're at, which is a largely an entirely almost private model. Well, thank you very much, Noreen. Uh, there's quite a lively debate going on in the chat line about um, uh, the fact that we have a largely market uh, sector provision of childcare and uh, whether we should be moving towards more public one. Could I ask Catherine Hallinan uh, to put her question and um, then um, also Kieran Cronin, because I think both of your questions are relevant to this discussion. So could I ask you just to put your questions one after the other and then Ursula and Noreen will respond. I was just wondering um, whether e EU countries are doing better. The EU countries that are doing better than us, are their childcare um, publicly run or are they privately run? And if the countries that are privately run, um, are their facilities more expensive than ours? So okay. kind of leads into the question. Thanks, Catherine. And Kieran, you had a specific question. So yeah, I was wondering just was there, like was has there been any analysis carried out in relation to a public childcare system and what would the cost be per child? I suppose versus the current mostly private uh, provision of of the, of the services. And I suppose like I suppose there's always a fear if it goes uh, into the I, I just add, add I suppose to the, the comment was if it goes into the public, is there a fear like a bit like some of our other services that it, you know it, it leads to become a very uh, expensive service to provide. Okay, thanks. Would Ursula and Noreen like to respond? Um, could I just come in on that, Catherine? Please, Ursula, yeah. Yeah, um, 
Yes, I think uh, if you look at the countries um, across Europe that, uh, they, that are doing well in terms of childcare, they are predominantly public, uh, public managed and public funded systems. Um, and I think the Nordic countries in France also, uh, Denmark, you'd see um, publicly run facilities to a large degree. Um, you know, in, in the, qu the question of expense, I mean, you, I suppose it, it depends on, on, on the way the systems are, are operated. In different countries operate uh, systems that parents contribute and uh, contribute according to their means into publicly managed and organized systems. So, so that's, that, that's a, a model that I, I would like to see us um, going, going forward to. Um, the other thing Kieran asks about um, what, what would the transition from private to public look like? I think um, the, the government has set up an expert group to suggest a funding model for childcare, and they're due to report at the end of 21. So that's going to be a, a detailed um, consultation with the sector, and, and hopefully a, a very effective consultation with the sector to come up with a detailed model. So. Um, I, I think that's probably beyond the, the scope of, of our citizens' assembly as such. We, we need to indicate the principles that should inform that model. And I, I think um, that's been largely articulated. Um, but I don't think there's any reason that um, a, a, a public system has to be a, a, a outlandishly expensive. I think effectively managed systems and looking at the uh, best practice in other countries is something that we can take on board and I would hope we would do so. And I would hope the model, um, the expert group that's looking at the model for childcare funding should also look at a wider model for the funding of care centrally in Irish society. Mm -hmm. Noreen, anything to add to that? Um, it, just to say, you know, that comparisons are, are, are very problematic because they're, you know, they, they, they can appear to be very straightforward. Um, but, but generally speaking, it's fair to say from what research has been carried out, and, 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 I, and I mean kind of research that has actually looked in detail at, at comparisons, so we're talking about more small scale comparisons than the larger OECD or EU studies, um, it does seem um, that publicly funded and managed services, and they can be publicly, entirely publicly provided, or they can be a private sector but managed, where say there'd be caps on fees, there'd be um, uh, salary scales and so forth. Um, where they, where they uh, exist, they are more affordable, more accessible and of higher quality than in countries where it is a sort of hands-off private market-led model where the funding is relatively slight and we would fall into that latter category and we know that access is problematic particularly for children under three and we know that it is costly uh, as well and we actually don't have national data on the quality of, of childcare services so we know that they're varied but we don't have, have, have national quality. In relation to the working group um, uh, looking at the funding model, the, the terms of reference there are, are very clear that they're working within a market model, but they do make a reference to considering uh, the extent of public funding and degree of public management. So it's a step in the direction of um, thinking about the, the sort of provision of, of, of childcare as a public good. So I, I would be hopeful um, that, that they present some interesting uh, options and uh, uh, that we can move more towards what we know is likely to be um, a, 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 a more secure service. Thank you very much. Um, uh, can I bring in three people next uh, to ask just very short questions, one after the other? Alan Dean, John T. Quinn, and Siobhan Airy, please. And then we'll get some reactions. Hi, guys. I think my question was, um, when did we culturally change from kind of being brought up by our aunt or our grandparents? Uh, minded, I should say, not brought up, um, kind of as I remember from the 80s. And also, was it always very expensive? So I, so in, I, I understand over the last few years, I hear it, that it's been very expensive in child, private childcare. Was that always the way or did it suddenly explode during the boom in maybe the noughties? Okay, thanks, Alan. John T? 
I'm a grandparent and I had grandchildren going to uh, preschool and I know one of my daughters uh, is a teacher. It's costing her 60 euro a day for private childcare. 60 euro a day. And, and the only reason she goes to work is because she's dedicated. Childcare needs to be standardised. It needs to be taken over by the government. The, the, the privatisation is actually a, a fat cow being made fatter by parents wanting to go to work and needing it. And it's also divisive among the children, among families. Certain families can't send their children to childcare because they can't afford it. And it's, uh, there's a, a class divide developing there. The other thing too I'd like to take up uh, Homebridge at the uh, Ting Award suggestion and how to pay for all this. She has suggested that um, child benefit be cut again. Child benefit was cut during the bad times to pay and bail out the banks. And here now somebody is advocating to go after it again. Child care, the child benefit, all right, maybe somebody may need it just for pocket money or a, tax or a car payment. But the majority of people depend on it. They actually depend on it. Now, I would suggest the way to go and fund uh, public child care is simple. You run on, you run on, um, and how do you put them Pay for government, for the government to take responsibility, first by seriously tackling the imprudent and wasteful spending of government departments and agencies, and secondly, by strict, strict, Ethno, eth, ethical governance of private chi, privatized child care. In other words, the government get their own house in order when they're spending money because they're spending it at an enormous rate, irres, irresponsibly. Uh, Siobhan Airy, could you come in now, please? Yeah, thanks. I just had two questions, which was um, so the, the principle based approach, I think, which was also what you'd mentioned there about a publicly funded approach and a publicly managed one. Um, like our, with the initiative that's currently happening on the funding side, could you see that leading to that approach? You know what I mean? In terms of, I know that they, they were looking at like um, childcare as a public value, but they haven't explicitly named it as a, as, a, as a public good, I suppose, or a publicly provided thing. So I guess my question there was, look at, you know, is there a plan to move towards that or, um, can a plan be generated from what's already happening within within government on the funding side? And the second one was, given that our focus is on gender equality, right? I just wonder, would you have any thoughts on, like from a gender equality perspective, what would be the specific things that a publicly funded and publicly managed model should be thinking about? Like, are there kind of features of that that come to mind? Thanks. Okay. Now, can I come back to Ursula and Noreen both for quick answers to those questions and then any final comments they'd like to make before we wrap up, because we need to end in the next three to four minutes so that we have enough time in the breakout groups. There's a very lively discussion going on in the chat line and that's great. And please continue that in your groups. Um, but I'll just ask um, for uh, Ursula and Noreen to, make, to, to respond and then to make some final comments. And we'll try to get back to you with as many answers as possible on the questions that we haven't been able to cover in this. Uh, it's always too short, the Q&A, but um, one of my jobs is to be fairly strict with the timekeeping. <coughs> so can I bring in Noreen first and then Ursula just to wind up this part of our discussions, please. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, in relation to Alan's question about the cultural change from the 80s, he's spot on. Um, in 1999, a national childcare strategy was published and its terms of reference committed to providing childcare as a service to working parents. And in a way, um, there was a rapid call uh, you know, for providing uh, places, and that has that is what has led to a largely private model. Um, in terms of costs, they they have been uh, rising certainly since um, services have the demand has been outstripping the supply, and private sector came in later in the in the two thousands, and since. At two thousand and five six, it's 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 been growing. So you're absolutely right. Um, there's if you're interested in, in further details, I've written some ex extensively on that growth. Um, John T's observations about private, it is true, the nature of private at the moment is that it is divisive in the sense that those who can afford it can afford it and many people who can't afford it have to um, seek multiple ways uh, of, of, of getting the sort of service that they need. 
um, and in relation to the efficient spend of funding and budgets, um, I mean, I think it's a it's a useful point. I would point out that in the in the context of childcare, it's actually valid in the sense that there are duplications. There's a there's a dual inspection system which could be a single inspection system. There's um, national bodies which could have built on on local bodies and so forth. So there's certainly room for maneuver there. Um, and in relation to Siobhan's question, the last question there about the principles, she's right, I think, in pointing out that the principles underpinning the work of the workforce or the work group, working group on funding model don't resonate um, as being one that's looking towards uh, childcare as a public good and shifting or transforming uh, the model. Um, my hope is that because they mention in the terms of reference, um, because they mention um, funding and public funding and public management that we may be moving in that direction. I don't actually think that we that the move is significant enough. I think COVID has raised issues which it would be a shame that the working group didn't kind of actively incorporate into perhaps new um, frames of reference. And finally I would just um, point out the complexity of looking at childcare as a gender equality issue without looking at children. It, it's not easy to disentangle and, um, uh, and I think um, the, the, the respect uh, that we give to children and the respect that we give to women um, matters and the review of, 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 of childcare uh, perhaps now will take this into account a little bit more than it did in the past. It's more than a service to parents. It's a seriously important service to children. Thank you. Um, and Ursula, to wrap up this part of our discussions, please. Yeah, just to make a couple of short points. Um, I think uh, the first thing is that we, we need to understand that the provision of, of childcare uh, is a relatively expensive uh, service to provide. It's lab labor intensive. We have to have small groups um, in, that are in charge of one or two people at a time. Uh, with, within our system. So it is labor intensive, it, it is costly, um, but I think that those costs need to be seen as a social investment and we need to be looking at, at uh, provision of childcare as a public good. Um, the other thing about it is, uh, and that relates to both the points uh, from, from Siobhan and, and Alan, um, I think we need to be able to respect the choices that different households and families make. And at the same time, have a child-centered system um, that emphasizes quality of care linked to education. So I think we need to respect, so some families may uh, look to home-based care, some uh, families may look to um, center-based care. We need to have flexibility. And that applies to our wider care system as well. We need to respect different choices, but also provide for those different choices uh, in, in, a, in a full way um, so that grandparents and neighbours and people with disabilities provide care. Um, uh, you know, the, people with disabilities are not just care recipients, they are also care providers. And all of those uh, can be involved in a community-based system that has public support and regulation in terms of quality. So there's a lot of different things that go into that mix. Um, and some of the principles apply to care generally, and some of the principles apply particularly to childcare. Um, but it is true that we have um, the, the, the uh, under the EU system that we introduced the uh, age three um, free access. Ninety-five percent of those places were taken up. So there's this huge demand, uh, an unmet demand out there for public provision of childcare. And, and when we go further down that road, we will see that materialise in, in, in the best possible way, I would think. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to thank um, Ursula and Noreen very much, not only for being with us this morning, but also for all the work they put into giving us very clear and informative presentations. Um, and I think you can see both from the, the few, relatively few people who got to put their questions live, but also from what's going on on the chat line, that there are lots and lots of opinions and lots and lots of questions and lots of ideas on this. So I think this is the perfect moment now for you all to move into your breakout groups. And we'd like you to discuss two questions. Um, 
First one that you should give about 20 minutes to would be what, if any, do you see as the main gaps and deficits in Ireland's system of childcare? And then once you've spent about 20 minutes on that, please move on to the second question, which is what would you like the Assembly to recommend to improve Ireland's system of childcare? Now, as always, please also agree among yourselves who will be the rapporteur to bring the rest of us the feedback from your particular group discussion um, so that we can all hear about your discussion and conclusions. And just a final comment. Um, you told us recently that the changes that we introduced last time to maximise equality of voice, you told us that they worked well. So the facilitators will follow that approach again today. Now, we won't be playing a video during the breakout session this morning because we want to give you enough time for discussion, but the facilitators have been asked to give you a very short comfort break at some point during the morning. So we're going to uh, move you into your breakout groups now. We will break for lunch at 12 o'clock. And as you know, we would ask you to keep your Zoom open. And from one o'clock on, if you'd like, you can tune in for an informal chat with the other members of the Assembly. And we'll all be back for the uh, afternoon part starting at um, 1.30. So I look forward to seeing you all then. And in the meantime, keep the discussion going uh, with all the energy and enthusiasm that's showing up on the chat line. And also please try to come back to us with clear points that um, emerge from, from your discussion groups. So we'll move you in now and we'll see you all later. Thanks a lot.